Welcome to the last day of the 10 day accessibility challenge. Today's topic is accessible audio. Much of the work we've done over the past 10 days has focused on visual elements, how to make text and images accessible. Today, we'll turn our focus to audible accessibility. Podcasts, music, documentaries and films, and video micro lessons are just a few of the incredibly powerful teaching tools that use audio. But for the situations when we can't hear sound, we need visual text to help. There are two common types of text that accompany audio, transcripts and closed captioning. All audio should be accompanied by a transcript, and audiovisual media requires closed captioning. Whether they are listening to content while in a loud or crowded space, hearing impaired or deaf, or watching with the sound off so they don't disturb sleeping children. Many people rely on transcripts and captions. So here's the important details of ensuring your captions and transcripts are stellar. To be effective, transcripts and captions need to be accurate, like 99% accurate. This includes spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Though that may sound like a high bar, errors in spelling and punctuation are likely to confuse the people who are most reliant on them. And that's not a good strategy. As we strive towards 99% accuracy, here are some formatting guidelines your transcripts and captions should follow. Use mixed case font. Avoid all caps unless there is shouting. Use a serial or Oxford comma. Indicate off-screen sounds such as music. Indicate the speaker if there is more than one narrator. Transcripts are required for all audio content, but they're not sufficient for video content. Videos must also include closed captions. Captions should follow these guidelines. They need to be synced with the audio. They should be written in a sans-serif font. It should be no more than two lines per frame. It should stay on screen no more than six seconds and they need to break in logical places. So let's talk about auto captions. They're getting good, really good, but the places where they are not good really matters. Auto captions don't understand the context at all, so the machine algorithm is worse at guessing the right word than a six-year-old learning to read. Auto captions are not going to handle three critical types of information well. Dates, vocabulary, and people's names. For instance, the auto captioning tool in Canvas's studio insists that my name, Lene Whitley Potts, is either Renee with the facts, I kind of like that one, or Anne with the pots. Either is pretty problematic, but the point is that when you're teaching, getting dates, numbers, technical vocabulary, and people's names right is pretty critical. Editing auto captions is critical. We wish this video could teach you how to fix YouTube's auto captions, but their interface is constantly changing and this video would soon be out of date. We can refer you to a fantastic resource that is constantly updated. Go to 3playmedia.com and look at their guides on how to caption. We have one parting gift for you. Nothing is worse than finding the perfect YouTube video to teach a concept in your course and then finding out the captions have no punctuation and the words are incorrect. There is an easy fix. Enter a YouTube search, open the filter option, then select closed caption. Your results will be limited to videos with captions. No more falling in love with a video just to find out the captions are bad. Well folks, we did it. You've just finished the 10 day accessibility challenge. What are you gonna do tomorrow? How about making some accessible content? And remember, sharing our resources is the key to our success. Thanks for sharing your time during the 10-Day Accessibility Challenge.